In this video, we will be talking about activation and loss functions. So why do we need an activation function? So activation functions have different functions depending on whether they are used in the output layer or whether they are used in the hidden layer for multi-layer neural networks. Since we have so far talked only about single layer networks, most of our discussion here will be restricted to activation functions as they are used in the output node. So typically an activation function in the output layer can control the nature of the output. So for example, we saw that in the case of the perceptron, the use of the sign activation converted a real value to plus one or minus one, which was the class label. However, there are other types of activation functions which can create outputs of different forms. So for example, if you have a bounded probability in zero one, you can use a particular kind of activation function known as the sigmoid function uh, in order to create that value. Another point about activation functions is, is that the nature of the activation function used for inference, that is for the final prediction of the test instance may sometimes be different from that used for constructing the loss function in training. In fact, the perceptron, which you saw in the previous lecture, it uses a sign activation function for predicting to a class label uh, between one or, and minus one. But when you look at its loss function, that's the perceptron criterion, it's really using the identity activation during training. Uh, so the identity activation essentially when you don't use any kind of activation function. Now, activation functions ha also have a very critical role to play in multi-layer neural networks, as we'll see in later lectures. In fact, uh, one of the results that we'll see in later uh, lectures is that Incorporating nonlinearity into the hidden layers is a very critical part in increasing the learning capacity of a model. So a neural network with any number of layers but only linear activations can be shown to be equivalent to a single layer network. It's only by incorporating nonlinearity in the hidden layers that you are able to increase the learning power of the network. So Let's first uh, revisit the perceptron. Uh, in the perceptron, uh, in the last lecture, we discussed that it was using the sign activation, but that's not quite correct to say that the perceptron only uses the sign activation for prediction. This, this, uh, the sign activation is used only for inference. However, when you're constructing the loss function, you don't use any activation. Uh, so it uses, that is called the identity activation. So typically, uh, Activation functions like the sign function, they are not very useful for constructing loss functions because they are discrete activation functions with sudden jumps. Such activation functions are non-differentiable and you really cannot create a differentiable loss function which you need for neural network training. So why do we need loss functions? So typically in most single layer neural networks, you'll see that uh, the loss function is typically paired with an activation function in order to quantify how far we are from a desired result. So, so just to revisit the perceptron criterion, you can see that the perceptron criterion is essentially <coughs> given by that formula over there. Now note that if an instance x, y is classified correctly, the loss of that instance is zero because then the then w the dot product of w and x has the same sign as y and the max of minus y multiplied by w, x and zero will be zero. So the loss will be zero for correctly classified training instances. So these types of uh, continuous and smooth loss functions enable gradient descent approaches in neural networks. So gradient descent is at the heart of all neural network learning. So, so, so typically what's going to happen is that in most neural networks at the output nodes, you'll create some form of loss function, which is typically a function of the output nodes. And you're going to use that loss function in order to learn the parameters of the neural network with the use of gradient descent. So let's go through some of the common activation functions that are used in neural networks. So the identity activation, which is essentially not using any kind of activation function at all, uh, is used in the output layer when the outputs are real values. So, so for example, if you had to uh, perform linear regression, you would typically use identity activation. So in that case, you, ca you can see that the predicted value 
of the output would simply be the dot product between the parameter vector and the uh, input vector. And then uh, when you take this predicted value and you compute the squared loss, you get a linear regression model. In fact, when you work out the gradient descent steps, they are exactly identical to linear regression. Now, you can also use uh, the ones and minus ones, the binary outputs with, with this kind of identity activation and a similar squared loss. And that kind of learning is referred to as Widrohoff learning. In fact, historically, Widrohoff learning was the second method which was proposed after the perceptron. Uh, and the, the use of the identity activation is quite common even in multi-layer networks. It, it's sometimes used in, in hidden layers. And it's in the output layer, it's, it's often used even for discrete output. So for example, the perceptron criterion is, is a discrete output, but its loss function uses identity activation. So as we'll see in later lectures, there are many kinds of models which use identity activation, but they use complicated nonlinear loss functions. Another very commonly used activation, both in single layer and multi-layer networks is the sigmoid activation. So the sigmoid activation is essentially one divided by one plus exponent of the, of the negative of the argument. So you can see that this value is always between zero and one. So typically it converts a real value to a probability. So for example, if you have a training pair x, y, you could apply the, this prediction to the training pair by using the same set of parameters, parameter vector, uh, vector w. So this would have the same architecture as the perceptron, except that the final layer, instead of using the, uh, the, the sign or the identity activation, you would just be applying the sigmoid activation. In that case, your output would be a probability value between 0 and 1. Now note that if the value of, uh, of the dot product of w and x is 0, the value of this probability is 0 0.5. Uh, if, if, if the dot product is positive, then the value of this probability is greater than 0 0.5. And if the dot product is negative, then the value of the probability is less than 0 0.5. So essentially, it's giving you a probability where the class label is minus 1 or 1. So this is kind of a soft way of predicting binary class labels. Now you can pair this activation function with logarithmic loss. So for example, for positive instances, you would apply minus log y for positive instances and minus log one minus y for negative instances. This is essentially a negative log likelihood model. And the resulting model, it is referred to as logistic regression. We will go into more details of this model in some later lectures. So the, uh, now the sigmoid activation, uh, I forgot to mention, the sigmoid activation is also used very commonly in multi-layer networks. It's often used within the hidden layers as well. Uh, but here we are only talking about single layer net networks because that is all that we have introduced so far. Then the, tan, then the hyperbolic tangent activation is a scaled and translated uh, version of the sigmoid activation. In fact, uh, if you horizontally and vertically scale the sigmoid activation, uh, what you get is the hyperbolic tangent activation. And note that the sigmoid activation is always non-negative. In fact, the value is always positive uh, for all real values of the argument. Whereas in the hyperbolic uh, tangent, the values could be either positive or negative. So often this is very desirable. It, it is often more desirable than sigmoid activation when used in hidden layers. And even in cases where the output could be either a positive or negative value, often the TANF function can be used. However, the TANF function is more commonly used in the hidden layers of multi-layer networks. Uh, finally, there are two piecewise linear activation functions, which are the ReLU and the hard tan edge. So, so these activation functions are essentially similar to identity activation functions within particular ranges. So the ReLU, for example, for non-negative values, it's essentially the similar to the identity activation values, but for negative values, you just set it to zero. The hard TANA activation function, you can see that it roughly looks similar to the TANA activation, at least in shape, except that it's piecewise linear. So here you, you use the identity activation for values between minus one and one. And then if the values are outside minus one and one, then you set them to those thresholds. So, so any value less than minus one is set to minus one and any value greater than one is set to one. 
so uh, all activation functions discussed so far map scalars to scalars now there's an additional activation function which is a softmax activation function which maps vectors to vectors so essentially what it does is that it maps a set of real values to probabilities and it is used used as a generalization of sigmoid activation which is used in multiway logistic regression and we will discuss this activation function in more detail in later lectures so a uh, neural network learning typically requires gradient descent of the loss function now the loss function is itself often a function of the output o which is obtained by using the activation function so the, so at some point you are going to uh, have to compute the partial derivative of o with respect to v during neural network parameter learning uh, so so it's useful to work out the details of the derivatives of this common activation function which we have seen in previous slides and one of the things that we we'll see that especially in the case of sigmoid and the tanna activation functions the the derivatives are more easily expressed in terms of the output o rather than in terms of the input v so here i have uh, given a list of the useful derivatives of uh, the common activation functions so the sigmoid and the tanna activation function you can see they are expressed in terms of the outputs rather than the inputs and they take on a particularly simple form the relu uh, since uh, it is similar to the identity activation function within a particular range its derivative is 1 for positive values of v and it's zero otherwise with the hard tanner the, the derivative is 1 for values of v in the range of minus 1 to 1 and it is zero to otherwise and it is zero otherwise so 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 these derivatives we'll be using very commonly throughout this course so it's best to uh, commit them to memory because uh, they will be used repeatedly in neural network learning 